What's good, YouTube? Crown Jewel from Crown Jewel Boxing. Back with a gym. Well, busy weekend in boxing. Um, Tank versus Frank. Um, Tank versus Devin. Full sparring footage released. Uh, and Floyd Mayweather. Um, I'm normally a huge fan, but totally disappointed. Um, and I'll get into that on this video. First and foremost, the OG uh, when it comes to these guys. About the same age as me, but Floyd Mayweather Jr., um, one of the best fighters in the history of the sport. Um, I'm a very, very big fan of him, as, as well as I was a fan of what he was able to do with Tank's career. Um, but uh, the reality is um, when I saw that sparring footage, I don't care who released it. I know Floyd will say he didn't. Beyond that, um, if he released it the day after Tank's fight to steal a shine that was weak, um, posting on the social media that Tank first Frank was canceled, that was weak. And what I'm really disappointed in as a vet in the sport, um, a promoter, and someone who should have been the adult in the room when that sparring was going on between those two young men, he allowed several unsafe acts to happen during that sparring. Um, he was completely one-sided, pro-Devin. And if I'm Tank, I don't know if I'd have been able to sign with a guy that treated me like that when I was in his gym sparring, but that's just me. But the most alarming things, um, Tank had his back turned. Floyd instructed Devin to hit him in the back, um, and Devin did it, hit him in the back of the head. Um, as a slight to Devin, we all know he's not a puncher. It's further accentuated because he hit De uh, Tank clean with his back turned in the back of the head, didn't budge him, hit him clean while he was turned to the side talking to somebody else, didn't budge him. And not only did Floyd not intervene when this was happening as the quote-unquote ref in the ring, he actually was encouraging that kind of behavior. So I'm extremely disappointed in that. And, um... You know, I remember a time when Mark Ratner and the Las Vegas um, Athletic Commission was talking about investigating, you know, Floyd as a promoter for those doghouse rules sparring. Videos like this is not going to do a whole lot to help his case um, if they decide to look into it. So, again, like, that's just not cool from what I see. Now, um, Sabriel Matias, everybody said he was this big, bad monster. Um, I never really commented on him whether he was or wasn't. I know he is a puncher, but... He lost to Liam Pyro, so <laughs> there goes that. You know what I mean? He's he's going to have to, you know, get back in the win column at the very least before we start talking about him being the dominant player at 140. So, again, um, that's why boxing is boxing. You know, one guy looks like he's here to dominate or, you know, could be levels above and have major advantages against the guys in this division and unexpectedly gets knocked off and we're looking at a totally new narrative. You know, like I said, the beauty in boxing. But the meat and potatoes. Tank versus Frank. If you guys don't start giving Javante Tank Davis his props, I don't know what this man has to do to get credit. Um, for those of you that were saying uh, Frank was doing well in the early rounds and should have just kept doing that and not been on the ropes, um, and maybe the fight would have went different, he did do well in the early rounds, and he did exactly what Javante Tank Davis allowed him to do in the early rounds. Tank didn't offer much offense early, and it looked like Frank was controlling the fight. But if you know what you're looking at, Tank was applying constant effective pressure, even though he may not have been throwing punches at that point, as much as you know, I would like or most people would like to see. He was put his high guard up, walking to Tank, pressing him, and every now and then touching him with some good shots down to the body, which eventually affected his legs and put a lot of mental pressure on him that eventually wore him down. I predicted before the fight that... um. Tank would start touching Frank around the fourth round and would get him out of there by the eighth. Well, I was almost right. He started touching him in the third, um, stepped it up every round from the fourth through the eighth, and in the eighth, you know, finally put the finishing touches on and knocked him out. For those that say um, Frank, you know, he could have avoided that by not being in the corner, he didn't voluntarily go in the corner. Tank's pressure placed him in that corner, and if you look, Right before he got knocked down, two things happened. First of all, he was like cowering down, falling into the corner, almost looking like, I hate to say it, um, some of those abuse commercials where you see a kid getting ready to be hit by their parent and they're just like trying to shrink and get away. He kind of looked like that in the corner, number one. Number two, all y'all said to flinch that didn't matter at the weigh-in, it mattered. He got knocked out. Similar, because I told y'all he will react to everything from what I've seen from that flinch. And he didn't, you know, in closing his eyes. Tank waved the right hook at him that he didn't really intend to land. 
Frank reacted to it, and what'd he do? He closed his eyes. Y'all say it's natural. Everybody closes his eyes. Doesn't make a difference. Yeah, well, he closed his eyes. And by the time he, he opened his eyes, he was being hit by a left uppercut that put him out on his feet, left him pretty much paralyzed against the ropes. Tank was able to hit him with what he calls his brick hand, a straight left hand, put him out. That was the end of the fight. Um, in my estimation, Tank controlled every moment of that fight. Because even though Frank was able to land some punches, Tank was making him fight a lot faster than he wanted to, which led to him not being able to hold that pace, like I said. And by, you know, the fourth round, it, the, the, the beginning of his breakdown and demise in the fight had begun. And um, I'm just going to say it, you know, anybody 135 pounds, once Javante Tank Davis is able to start touching you, whether it be body or head consistently, it's not a matter of if you're going to get knocked out, it's when. Um, hats off to Javante Tank Davis. The sport of boxing's won. I wish people would stop trying to de uh, diminish his victory. Because, uh, Frank only got 18 fights. Well, we got a lot of guys that had team fights, you know what I mean? And he took the fight. Most people thought he had a chance to win the fight a lot, uh, uh, or at least be in the fight. A lot of people were saying he would win the fight, and nobody was complaining when he was slated to fight Shakur Stevenson. So please don't tear down Javante Tink Davis's win now that he beat him. He beat a very strong, determined, well-schooled, well-coached Frank the Ghost Martin. Oh, yeah, I want to shoot Derek James some bell. Do not get on here and say it was Derek James' fault. Like I said, there's nothing Derek James could have done to stop him from moving away and alleviate that pressure Tank was putting on him. His only alternative would have been to stand there and trade. He would have got a broke up even sooner. So I think Frank did what, what he could do. I think Derek James coached him to do what exactly it was he could do. Unfortunately, Tank was just a better fighter, um, and he beat him mentally more than physically, even though he did a number on him physically. So if you know what you're looking at, again, he wasn't voluntarily going from rope to rope or corner to corner. That was that pressure Tank was putting on him. So hats off to Javante Tank Davis, Coach Calvin Ford, Coach Kenny Ellis. You guys continue to do a hell of a job with this young man. Um, Again, I'm a huge fan. I think the sport of boxing won, and pff, we have a young juggernaut, man. Oh, yeah, and I said on Knockout Boxing 86 TV, I said it's going to be unpopular, but I think Tank combines the skill set and talent of a Zab Judah with the mental toughness of Floyd Mayweather. Well, after the fight, he said his number one fighter growing up was uh, Zab Judah before Floyd Mayweather. So I hate to say it. Again, y'all can call me Jules Stradamus because, I, I mean, I just see things. You know, I'm, I don't want to be vain, but when it comes to this boxing, I think I know what I'm looking at. But until next time, keep your hands up, your chin down, your ass off the floor. Peace.